For at TV, the world is thinking. In fact, it's interesting the way surrogacy has developed now. Now, the states in the United States, we haven't figured this out. Some states ban it, some permit it, and some haven't decided one way or the other. Many European countries ban commercial surrogacy, but in some countries, they encourage it as a source of revenue. In India, in 2002, they passed legislation legalizing paid pregnancy in hopes of creating a new industry, and they've succeeded. There is a town in Gujarat, in India, that is a center for paid pregnancy. It's expensive to do it in the United States, or in Britain, or in Germany. It costs about $75,000 to $80,000. The surrogate makes about 20 to 25,000 of that. In India, the surrogates make around 5,000, 6,000 dollars, which for many is an enormous sum, more than they would make in 15 years. So, in search of, of low-cost providers, people have outsourced the pregnancy business. It's an example of markets working as markets do, seeking the most efficient, low-cost way of achieving it. There's an obstetrician in Mumbai who told the Evening Standard, the London newspaper, that every 48 hours she delivers a child from a paid surrogate for a family in Britain, or the United States, or Germany, or elsewhere. Now, outsource the outsourcing of pregnancy through the market, usually not involving the, the egg. It's, the, it's the, um, the egg and the sperm are brought together, and then the surrogate is hired to carry it. We've heard a critic Deepak, who says, well, there are some values that are higher than market values, and we're trying to figure out what exactly the value is in this case. Can we hear now from a defender of the use of markets? The house was divided almost 50-50, a defender of paid surrogacy. Yes. Well, I am the mother, my name is Candy, I'm the mother of 17-year-old twins who were born from a paid surrogate. And really defy anyone to say that my feelings for my children are any less than the birth mothers were at the time. Good. And what about the... Um, I'm sorry, tell us your name again. Candy. Candy. What do you think of the, um, the Indian story? I think it's fabulous. I think that you have to remember or either adopt a child or a surrogate has her own reasons for doing this. And it is not up to anyone else to decide whether or not those are good or bad reasons. It is up to her to decide what's best for herself and her own family. Good. Thank you. All right. Now, who disagrees? Nobody ever said philosophy was easy. <laughs> Who disagrees? Do you have someone, Cheryl? Well, I, I think we, ha we are assuming that the surrogate, in the situation of the Indian women that we we're talking about, um, have the ability to make a decision or, or have uh, the right to say no. And I guess one of my concerns would be that kind of money um, being offered, young women's families may put pressure on them to, you know, support the family economically by, in a sense, selling their body. Um, so I think in the case, as long as a woman is well-educated, understands the contract, understands what she's getting herself into, then I argue the contract should be enforced. But when we start talking about making it a business, 
with people that don't have a lot of opportunities to make that kind of money. I think people that aren't well educated or don't have good abilities to make decisions or make decisions about their body could be taken advantage of. Good, thank you. And what's, what's your name? Very good. Luann. Luann.